The terms strong AI, narrow AI, and weak AI come up in all sorts of different discussions about artificial intelligence. And did you know that they're often frequently used incorrectly? Yeah, many people just don't really have a clear definition of what they mean. And even worse, there's often parallels with AGI and ASI, artificial general intelligence and super intelligence. So in this video, we're just keeping it simple. Let's talk terminology. It's important to take some time once in a while to get everybody on the same page. Plus knowing how to use these terms correctly will help you understand and communicate the world of artificial intelligence to you and your friends around the water cooler. Let's start with weak, weakling. AI. So the one synonym we have here is narrow AI and weak AI. Those actually mean the same thing. I personally like narrow AI because it helps symbolize how it's actually artificial intelligence that's built to do a specific task. And this can include examples like when you use artificial intelligence to optimize the heat throughout a data center, maybe you get rid of the spam that's in our email, or even something very powerful but does have sort of a singular focus like Google's own search. So they excel at a single purpose, but it's not the kind of AI that can just plug into anywhere and it's definitely not generally intelligent. From the famous sci-fi movie 2001 Space Odyssey HAL 9000, which seems like it might be generally intelligent, is not. That's narrow AI or weak AI. And why is that? Well, even though it talked and it was like very interactive and very complicated in a sense, it was actually meant to just pilot a spacecraft. HAL 9000 operated based on the data it received in terms of controlling the ship. Even when it felt like HAL 9000 was making independent decisions, these decisions were all being made off its programmed directives, rather than from what we'd call a generalized or conscious intelligence. It had a primary goal, which was the success of the mission. And its actions, even though they appear malevolent in the movie, are not actually malevolent. They're not there because it doesn't like the people and really hates them, it just wants to complete its mission. And that's its objective, or what we often call the objective function that it's optimizing for. Okay, now let's flip the coin over and talk about strong AI. So strong AI is broadly intelligent. Humans are a form of strong AI. Strong AI is defined by the fact that it has human-like cognitive abilities. In theory, strong AI should be able to perform any intellectual task that a human can. So if you're a big Iron Man fan, the AI that talks to Tony Stark named Jarvis, that's generally intelligent, Take that's strong AI. And we've learned this throughout the movies because the way that Jarvis can understand his needs, his wants, and find its own solutions, not limited to just the programmed objective that it had in the first place, shows that it is a strong AI. Jarvis can do more than any one specific task. Jarvis can solve problems that Tony Stark cannot. And it's elements of Jarvis that were incorporated into the character Vision. Vision is a being of synthetic nature with general intelligence and consciousness. Vision's ability to reason, think, and love, and even philosophize means that he's a strong AI. Strong Strong AI can comprehend and act on a vast array of different situations in different environments and come up with vastly creative solutions. But if we know strong AI, narrow AI, and weak AI, what? AI. Artificial intelligence is a little bit of a spectrum, but there is a big gap from something that's programmed to something that learns. Usually when I'm talking about artificial intelligence, I'm referring to something that is tuned from data, something that has learned, something that has what they call parameters that have been adjusted, something that was told how to be at the beginning, but not how to be at the end. It had to see and learn to get there. And that's in comparison to something that's programmed, like a calculator. When you think about if then statements, just a whole bunch of them coming together to make your computer work, that computer has been programmed to behave a certain way. ChatGPT has learned how to communicate with humans by reading text that we've written before. Spam filters that are based on artificial intelligence have been shown a lot of examples of what spam looks like and what good emails look like so it can make its own decisions based on something that we really can't explain. Neural networks are often considered black boxes, meaning they are tuned in some sort of almost magical way, some way that's more complicated and hard to explain, but just simply works. Sometimes they're basic optimization problems and they're easily explained. Sometimes they become incredibly complicated and they become much harder. One of the most iconic characters in Star Wars, R2-D2, that's an example of an artificial intelligence system. So while not maybe completely strong AI because it's not totally human-like in its cognitive abilities, R2-D2 shows enough traits that we can definitely call him artificially intelligent. R2-D2 can unlock doors, fix spaceships, and has to understand the environment that he's in and come up with a solution to those problems to do that. That's AI. 
R2 is able to store and retrieve information, has memory, has an understanding of when to access that memory in the right context. R2-D2 shows interactivity. It's a droid that can communicate with all sorts of different systems. And what puts R2-D2 closer on the spectrum to true strong AI, although I want to put him all the way there, is his independence. I mean, R2 doesn't speak in a human language, it's just like beeps and bops and boops or whatever, but in theory, those are a pattern, a pattern that means something. And if they truly convey things like emotion, inner thought, pondering oneself, then we could say, oh my gosh, I think it's all the way super intelligent and maybe even conscious. Or if R2's beeps and boops are more just like patterned, then maybe something not as far up the spectrum. So R2 is a blend of weak AI in terms of like navigating the ship or solving specific problems with a blend of strong AI elements coming up with broad solutions to broad problems. So why would somebody use another term called artificial general intelligence when they could just use strong AI? Artificial general intelligence or AGI is a step above artificial intelligence, which is much more broad. And in the world we live in now, because not many things are generally intelligent, if any, it doesn't mean that it's AGI. Because AGI, just like strong AI, has the ability to essentially do any cognitive tasks that a human could do. Once again, it's a more holistic version of machine learning. Machine learning can be narrow in a lot of cases, or it can be talking about the actual technique and the way that the model is built. But AGI means you've sort of achieved something general. AGI is not mirroring humans. It's not a prediction machine. It is generally intelligent. Like a hypothetical robot that can learn to cook from scratch. And then in an instant, switch over to a new task like learning how to play a musical instrument and getting more and more education on that and then getting better and better at it. And it can also solve math problems, even though it was never programmed for any of these three things. A good example of AGI would be Data from Star Trek Next Generation. Lieutenant Commander Data is an android with AGI capabilities. He can understand, learn, and perform any intellectual task that a human can. And then there's the fact that Data started, especially over time, getting more and more human-like emotions. Now, you don't have to have emotions to be AGI. You don't even need them for ASI. We actually probably need a word for that. Maybe artificial emotional intelligence. That could be coined right now. Because he can understand the logic behind human behavior. He can play musical instruments. He paints. And he engages in various human-like activities. He's definitely artificial general intelligence. In fact, the fact that he sometimes processes information faster than a human could means that you could argue that he almost moved up another rung on the ladder and he could almost be considered artificial super intelligence. Was that good for you? ASI would theoretically be able to outperform the best human brains in every single field. More scientific, more general, more creative, and even better social skills than us. And you can imagine how much different the world's gonna be when ASI gets here. And I mean the potential for both the risks and the benefits. Like we are gonna get so much from a super intelligence. We can ask questions that really practically we'd have to wait, you know, decades for humans to even try for, and it might be able to just figure it out in an instance. But of course, that's a lot of power if you want it to do some bad things too so you really got to be careful about the world we're stepping into. But I'll save that for another video. Just to help you define ASI, you could ask it questions like this. What's a solution to the global climate crisis? How can everybody have all of the energy they would ever need for the rest of their life? Can you make it so I live, live forever, forever please? please? Can you upgrade yourself so you have unprecedented abilities to even do more for me? You solve the mysteries of life while you're at it. Can I have that in a few days, please? But let me give you an example from a movie. Skynet is not confined to any individual robot. Skynet is an umbrella that is everywhere. There's no individual node or robot or server that you can cut out because it is everywhere. Now in the movie, Skynet was originally created by humans as a military defense mechanism, but it quickly became super powerful, super intelligent, and eventually self-aware, decided on its own goals, and thought exterminating humans, why not? It's ASI because its capabilities aren't anything like replicating a humans at this point. In the evolutionary story of like anthropology through humans, through our inventions, this invention has gone completely off on its own. And its ability to do strategic thinking at a speed that's just incomprehensible to the human brain means that we really not only have lost control of it, have no idea like what it's going to do, what it means for us, what the world's gonna be like. And it very well might not have anything that keeps it in check. And with no human emotions, what guarantee at all do we have that would even feel remorse or have any of the kind of things that sort of help keep the glue of society together for us humans? All right, so artificial intelligence versus machine intelligence. I don't know if you've heard machine intelligence enough. I kind of wish we used it more, but here's a breakdown of those two terms because they're kind of interchangeable too. 
but they're not exactly the same. Artificial intelligence refers to simulating human-like skills, cognitions, thinking abilities on a machine. So this is the process of learning acquisition, learning from data. And what it can learn is both the data itself and the rules that were used to create the data. And the term artificial intelligence is much more broad. It's a spectrum that holds all sorts of things underneath it. Various technologies, including machine learning, neural networks, natural language processing, and many others. So this term is broader in the sense that everything we just talked about with AI is under it, but it also can include a hard-coded or pre-programmed process into its thinking. So when someone says machine intelligence, they're also talking about other actions programmed ways of mimicking human cognition, human intelligence. So for example, if you ask ChatGPT to multiply two numbers, two times two, it can easily say four. That's an example of artificial intelligence. If you ask it a much bigger multiplication problem, it will start to fumble because it's a language model, it's not a calculator. If you're referring to that specifically, that's just artificial intelligence at work. But if you want to also talk about how ChatGPT might make the decision to use a plugin, grab a calculator, multiply it using the pre-programmed calculator, just the if-then statements, the ones and zeros that make a truly programmed calculator, then the term machine intelligence would encompass all of that. Whereas artificial intelligence would be talking about the part that's actually learning and using and thinking versus the part that actually used a pre-programmed piece of software, the calculator, to come up with its overall answer. And now with all of these terms, when it comes to safety, it's important that you don't think that safety is part of this spectrum at all. Like, don't forget, a dumb machine with just like a simple if-then statement hooked up to a powerful weapon can do a lot of damage. AI that's not super well trained is very unpredictable. It hallucinates a lot. It doesn't do the right thing much more often than a highly trained AI. But even a highly trained AI isn't a guarantee. Like you can never make sure that ChatGPT doesn't say a bad word. Imagine if it's hooked up to a weapon. You can't promise the same thing for that either. So in a weird way, it's like the smarter the machines get, to a degree, I feel safer. But then there's a degree where they become so smart, they might start being able to persuade us or deceive us or take on their own objective function and lie to us in service of that. And that might get us to a place where we completely lose control and we're in a very dangerous situation. And with different AIs hooked up to different military equipment and doing different things on the internet and making money for people in different nefarious ways, I have no idea how much risk is out there. So the variability is really high. It doesn't correlate to ASI or AGI or just basic AI or even just programmed risk. So as we enter these uncharted territories, just remember terminology like this can be helpful to know so you can understand what people are talking about. They're not just buzzwords, but they're foundation terminology that our AI infused world is going to be built on. So give that subscribe button a strong AI click. Help me get to my next goal, 8,000 subscribers.